I say thanks to the Center for uh, Research and Education on Violence Against Women and Children here at the Faculty of Education. I, I want to say that uh, the work that the center does has really guided our work provincially when it comes to our initiative around uh, ending violence and harassment in, uh, in this province. And I, I don't often get the opportunity to, to see the fingerprints of people in London on provincial legislation, but in this case, you can absolutely see the work that's happening here having an impact across the province and well beyond. So thank you for all the work that you are doing. Uh, we did introduce Bill 132 uh, in October. This legislation is perhaps one of the most important and timely pieces of legislation that I've seen in my time at Queen's Park. We share, a, we share the determination to take concrete action when it comes to tackling the issue of sexual violence and harassment, particularly in our post-secondary post uh, institutions. You see, we, we all believe and we need everyone to know that every person should have confidence that their body is their own and uh, that the word no carries the weight that it deserves. The unsettling reality is that between 15 and 25 percent of students in post-secondary education, of women in post-secondary institutions in Ontario, will experience some form of sexual violence during their academic career. That's a stunning statistic. Um, up to a quarter of women will have that experience in their time on campus. And we're not starting from, from nothing. Already there is a lot of work that is, is happening on our campuses. There are a wide range of services, policies, and supports that, that address sexual violence and harassment. However, we all know that more needs to be done to ensure this serious issue is properly addressed at our higher learning institutions. You'll remember almost a year ago, March 6th, doesn't seem like a year, we, um, we presented the government-wide action plan on March 6th. Since that time, we've made remarkable progress. Again, thanks in large part to people who are in this room today. You know that we have a premier who is deeply committed to this issue. I have the honor of working with her every day because she set out the order that we had to do something. We have great partners at universities, colleges, private career colleges, people who share our goals and have been with us every step on this journey. We're privileged to have student leaders, and I'm really delighted we have student leaders with us today who, um, who are leading, we say leaders of tomorrow, but you're leaders of today, leading this kind of change, advocating for progress on this issue. We, just as a principle, believe that all of us deserve to feel safe from sexual violence and harassment in our communities, in our workplaces, in our homes, and in our schools. And that's why we're delivering on our commitment to introduce legislation that supports survivors and ch challenges sexual violence and harassment. On October 28th, we introduce legislation that, if it passes, which I'm sure it will, uh, will make workplaces, campuses, and communities safer and provide more support for survivors of sexual violence. It builds on, the legislation builds on the It's Never Okay campaign a campaign that, uh, even though these times are very tight, as president of the Treasury Board, I can tell you times are really tight, uh, we're investing $41 million in this because it's a priority for our premier, for our government. So this legislation is wide-ranging. It recognizes that we <clears throat> all have a role to play in ending <coughs> sexual violence and harassment in Ontario. And I think that's one of the bigger changes that I've seen over the last little while is it's about all of us. It's about, it's about all of us understanding and recognizing and take action when we see inappropriate behavior. What I wanted to talk about today was the part of the legislation that 
will require colleges, universities, and private career colleges to have a standalone sexual violence policy. And for schools to review it, with students engaged in that review at least every three years. One of the things we learned as we started to dig deeper into this issue was that there were no consistent policies. We really, some, some places were doing a really good job, other places not at all. So every school, post-secondary school, will be required to have that policy, engage students in it, keep it as a living document by reviewing it every three years. Other measures in the action plan will support the safety of students by ensuring that each campus has a clearly stated complaint, procedures and response protocols, effective training and prevention programs, and services and supports for survivors available 24-7. It will support initiatives that reduce sexual violence and ensure safe campuses, and by making sure all students have information about preventing sexual violence and are informed of resources and supports starting with the first week of orientation and continuing throughout the year for students in all years of study. So it's not a one shot, it's a continual program that students will have that information they need. I, I, I believe, and I know you all do too, that ensuring the safety of students is one of our most important responsibilities. In fact, if we can ensure safety, uh, there's not much point um, doing all the other things that happen on campus. So we need to continue to work together to address this issue simultaneously on many, many fronts. I want to say thank you for being here today. I want to say thank you for your commitment. As I said at the beginning, I am so proud of the work that's happening right here in London. You've made us leaders. You have demonstrated to government what we can do when we all work together, and I want to say thank you for that. Thank you.